And we are recording. We are on. Awesome. Hey, everybody. Welcome. This is the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast, a special podcast because I have the one and only Claude Diamond again on the show. Claude, how Yay. are you? Thanks. Man, it's been a while. Thank you for having me back. You, well, you know, you are the most uh, interviewed guest on our show, I believe. I don't know if I've interviewed, or interviewed anybody more than you. Why, does, why doesn't David Letterman say that? Or uh, <laughs> Wait, he's but, gone. <laughs> you know, he's got a big old beard now. Have you seen him? Oh, yeah. He looks like he's, he looks like he's some of the people up here in Colorado who live in the backwoods, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so how's business, Claude? You know, uh, uh, Joe Namath used to say, I can't wait for tomorrow because I get better looking every day. I love this business. This is the thing that I have so much fun. I love the freedom that this business gives me the money that gives me the freedom. I can work when I want to work. I can enjoy my family. I can, I can do, um, I can do whatever I want. Freedom. It's just, um, I don't know how to explain it any better. I, I like it too. I like it a lot. I love the fact that, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I, I can just turn on the computer from anywhere in the world and run my business. Isn't that the best? My car. I just got to, I lease my cars. Look, I miss, uh, you and I are rent to own uh, lease purchase guys. I even lease purchased my car. Dude. My new car has uh, Wi-Fi, dedicated Wi-Fi in there. So when I'm in the middle of Arizona or Utah going back to San Diego, I can actually do deals in my car with, with, with all the bars I need for doing live Wi-Fi, Skype broadcast, Periscopes, uh, uh, Facebook Live, whatever. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I, I'm not used to doing, a, do you see this uh, light here? Mm -hmm. Does that help with getting more light on my face? Joe, know. you're beautiful no matter what you do. <laughs> okay, you don't, you don't need makeup. <laughs> All right, so um, guys, this is uh, the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast and uh, we're with Claude. Um, if you want to get all of the, the replay of this podcast, the show notes, uh, we're starting to even just do transcriptions now again, I think. Uh, go to realestateinvestingmastery.com to check that out. And um, today, Claude and I were talking about, I mean, we could talk for hours and hours about tons of stuff. I'm nervous. Uh, no, we were, we were talking about, about. I'm very nervous about today. No, <laughs> we were going to be talking about a debate, uh, having, getting, having a debate, a healthy, friendly debate on marketing. What works, what doesn't work. And why Claude uh, doesn't like direct mail, why he likes social media so much. So, um, Claude, let me just ask you, is direct mail dead? Is direct mail a scam? It's, it's not a scam and it's not dead. It's just not as productive as it used to be. Um, because you talk to him, I'll give you a great story. Okay. My son, he's 26 years old. He's okay. Works for a, a, a fortune 500 company and mom sent him something in the mail, a gift card uh, to go to Trader Joe's or Amazon or something like that. So we, we went up there to uh, Wyoming and to help him move. And uh, mom says, Hey, did you check your mailbox before we, you know, give the landlord back the keys? I said, no, I better do that. And the mailbox was stuffed. And guess what was in there? The gift card mom sent them six weeks ago. Okay. Millennials, young people do not go to the post office. So right away, we've eliminated, uh, we're not marketing uh, to a group that utilizes the post office. So it's, it, it, what they do do is they hold this little uh, gateway drug device, the phone, in their hand. They go to the bathroom with it. They sleep with it. Okay, they eat their breakfast, uh, they drive with it, unfortunately. And this is the device we, I use for my marketing. The post office is still viable if you have a qualified list, a good opt-in list, which I know you have. You have a big following. So if you have an address list of people who have voluntarily given you that, that address, I think that's a brilliant list, absolutely. The, the other thing is the costs involved. The post office, I don't even know what a letter costs anymore, okay? Uh, the thing is, what an average mailer is what fifty cents to a dollar a unit, Joe. Uh, if you count, I don't even know. I know postcards are about forty-five cents. If you okay, if if you count the list, 
And uh, sometimes it depends on if you're sending bulk or a lot or a little or. Yeah, exactly. So, but the thing is per unit. So what uh, the, my, my biggest, my biggest argument against post office is the return on the investment. I hate waste. I hate losing money. Okay, so if each unit, if it's a qualified unit or mailer and you get a high ROI, okay, which is, um, it, it, that's fine. But if I can do the same thing through social media market, I'll give you an example. I had a young lady yesterday. She called me from Reno, Nevada. She had a great deal with an $80,000 spread. She called me. I call that virtual attraction, Joe. She called me. How did she find? And I always ask this question. I know you do too. How did you find me? And she says, I went online to guess where? Google. She said, I, I typed in investors or I needed um, help, mentor help or coaching help. She went in there. She got to my YouTube page. I have over 650 videos on YouTube page. I do videos every week, very informative, non-commercial. She said, I watched four or five of your videos. You said, call me. I answered my phone. She said, I called you. You answered your phone. She set up an appointment with me online also. And we talked and now we have a second meeting today on a property with an $80,000 spread or margin in there. She came to me. How much did it cost me, Joe? Nothing, but it cost you a lot of time. You know, she called me though. What's the value, the ROI of putting out a video that costs nothing except a little creativity, a little fun. You know, my goofy, crazy Claude videos. You and I have done some together. We, you know, we did that one video we did. I mean, we're approaching six figure viewership on that one video we did on that cold call. Cold Tell them yeah. about that, Joe, that one video we did. Yeah, we, I was at a Starbucks. This must have been five, six years ago. I was at a Starbucks, and uh, Claude and I were on Skype. I said, hey, let's call a lead right now. And you said, okay, great. Don't give me any information. Just give me the phone number. That's it. And so we, he actually called the seller, uh, talked to the seller for five minutes. Super easy, nothing complicated. Asked him a few questions, and then says, you know, I'm looking for an investment property maybe that I can lease for a little bit and then buy. That wouldn't work for you, would it? And the guy said, yeah, yeah, maybe. I, I might, yeah, so send me an offer. I'd, I'd consider it. Yeah. And so uh, just like that, with a simple phone call, it was, it was hilarious the way Claude handled that call. I have uh, so much fun on the, and we've had uh, your podcasts um, on, on the gut sales method, learning to ask questions, understanding how people feel, having a lot of fun on the phone. Yeah, because I think a lot of people who work very hard at this business and gather a lot of information and spend a lot of time and money set up and marketing, then they get a little tongue tied on the phone and it's, and it's so uncomfortable. They procrastinate and do everything except the one thing that's the most important in this business. And that's talk to people. Exactly. I totally we, we agree on that because I was just oh, yeah. doing a Facebook live before we got on the phone here talking about that five sellers a day. Talk to five people a day. And I can almost virtually guarantee that you'll do a deal. How can you not do a deal if you don't talk to five people a day? That's, that's all we do. I say the same thing to my students too. But the, the lady who called me from Reno, she found me for free. We had a great conversation. We're already, we've exchanged everything we've done. I've sent her some paperwork. We're going to get a contract today, later today. Uh, and, and that deal came to me. Buyers come to me. Sellers come to me. Investors come to me. St uh, prospective students who want me to mentor them and coach them and gut sales come to me all through social media. And it, it well, doesn't let's, cost me anything, Joe. The ROI is spectacular. Let's break that down a little bit more because yes. uh, I, I would argue that with... Let me show. What is that? Sure. This is my mind map. I update it all the time. This is my social media mind map. By the way, if any of your students want it or something, just send me an email. And I'll yeah, and you can find Claude, by the way, at claudediamond.com. Um, and he'll actually give you his phone number here on this podcast, which yeah. blows me away. Uh, but anyway, two eight one five one five one. Not a big deal. <laughs> Not a big All right. Deal. So 
I, I would argue that direct mail still works because it's the fastest way to the get horse, a seller to call. Horse and buggy still work. All you got to do is give them alfalfa or hay or anything, <laughs> and they give you fertilizer for your lawn so you could grow tomatoes in beautiful Missouri. It's nothing wrong with a horse and carriage, but you drive that beautiful pickup truck and that little, what's that little two wheel thing you, you scoot around on? Uh, the Segway. <laughs> the Segway and everything like that. Why are you using a Segway instead of a, instead of a horse? Okay, that, that's the way I look. <laughs> the, the thing about it is, we're in, we're, mail works. It just doesn't work as well as it used to. And okay, I, I would say you're way. right. I, I totally agree. Um, but I'm not targeting the millennials. I'm targeting the guys that are Why in not? their 50s. Well, I, I want the, the homeowners in their 50s that have owned their house for 20, 30 years. It still needs a lot of work. It's deferred maintenance. They still read the mail. And, and, and it's, uh, they don't, they're not on social media as much. Now they are, I would say that. Uh, but let me ask you, Claude, um, you know, a lot of people listening to this podcast don't do any mentoring or coaching. And I know the answer to this, but I want to hear it from you. Okay. Um, so how do you find motivated sellers that have a house to sell? They're not looking for mentoring or coaching. They just want to sell their house. How do, right. how do you find them on social media? What kind of stuff do you put out there? You put out, there's, there's, si there's really six rules, I'll do them real quick, of social media. The six rules of social media uh, content, and I'm working right off here, off my mind, little mind map also. You have to put, and you do this too, you've got this wonderful podcast, Real Estate Mastery. Why do you do a podcast? What's the result of your podcast? People call you, they buy your products, your, your coaching services. I think occasionally they call you up with deals and things probably through that. You have thousands, if not tens of thousands by now, of followers from all over the world. You sure. do that podcast, it costs you very little for all the people that are there. Um, and that's, and, and this is what, and you're doing both. So, you know, uh, brav, uh, um, accolades to you, you're doing it all. You probably never sleep. Uh, I do, <laughs> uh, but you know, my, my podcast, I don't do my podcast to find deals. I though I do get students that bring me deals. Uh, my main purpose for the podcast, I love doing it. I love teaching and, and it's a way for me to sell products and, and sell my coaching and, and consulting services. Um, so, but what are the six, those six rules? What are those six rules for finding and let's maybe let's try to focus on finding deals like real okay, estate deals. Absolutely. It's got to be content driven. Okay. You've got to reverse engineer. Let me read the six off real fast and then I'll break them down. What well, it's got to be content driven. It's got to be creative. It's got to be consistent. You like you do your podcast all the time. It's got to be contemporary. It's got to relate to today. It's got to be compelling and draw them in. And it's got to be non-commercial because it's got to start with a C. It all starts, yes, I call it the six C's, okay? Because, yeah, you know, my, I married a woman named Claudia. My name's Claude. Uh, she wouldn't let me name my, my, my children Cloyd and Claudette, but, you know, say love, say love you. By the way, my 90-year-old mother-in-law, who I love dearly, is on the computer every day, and we're going to get her an iPhone. She doesn't know it, but we're getting her an iPhone for her next birthday. Okay. Right, today's the big one of those little clamshells. Today's the big day, too. Apple is oh, doing their, yes. big, their big event. I already right. had a meeting with my daughter who works for Apple. I, wanna, I want one of those $1,000 iPhones. <laughs> I do, too. Uh, absolutely. Con the con yeah. Let's start with content. If yeah. I was trying to attract uh, sellers, you said, or buyers or investors, doesn't matter. Both, yeah. I'm going to put out content. I'm going to put in a sexy, I'm going to do a video and put in a sexy title because I'm reverse engineering and somebody today here in Colorado or Missouri or wherever we are, someone today is going into Google and saying how to sell my home and how, I want to sell my home fast. I don't want to pay a real estate commission. The five mistakes all sellers make in Missouri or Colorado. Yeah, how that's really good. Yeah. You're, you're using specific keywords for, you know, if you're in St. Louis, you're saying, how to sell your house fast in St. Louis, Missouri, right? Yeah. How to sell your, the five mistakes sellers make in St. Louis. How to hire the best realtor in St. Louis. The five best neighborhoods that you want to live in in St. Louis. Um, how to invest in homes and get an 18% return in St. Louis or whatever. So you've got to have a sexy title. You've got to have 
um, in your keywords. You've got to have the right keywords. You've got to have a description with a call, uh, show to action or whatever they call it so that they click on something. It sounds like this, it would be really important not to just jump on at the spur of the moment and try to come up with something creatively. You need to probably map this stuff out in advance, right? Put it in a spreadsheet or something. You've got to make it, you've got to make it interesting and draw people in. It's got to, the next word, the con, after the content, it's got to be creative. It's got to be interesting. It's got to make them laugh or say, wow, no one, you know, I, this is better information than I was paying for. You've got to give them quality, Joe. Can I use bad language or is this a clean podcast? Yeah, as long as you, there's a video that look, you guys got to go to Claude's YouTube channel. He's got a video of him sitting on a toilet. Um, you, he's got you. <laughs> you have your pants on, but he's he's actually sitting on a toilet, looking at toilet paper or something like that. Okay, that's what I'm. I'm what I was gonna I was gonna use the S word. I'll keep it clean. Okay. S is S. You guys know what I mean, okay? You have gotta give people. You, if you're just doing a commercial, boring video. You've got to put in energy. You've got to have an interesting topic. It's got to be content driven. It's got to be creative. It got to, it can be funny. It can be entertaining. So you've got to be you've got to have those creative juices going in your in your videos or your blogs or your Instagram pictures or or your live streaming, which Joe and I are doing right now on Periscope and Facebook Live and everything else. It's got to be consistent too. And this is one of the most important, Joe. They got you can't just do it once every six months once a month you've got to do it I do stuff I spend one hour a day on social media marketing one hour a day my but my budget and just to share with you I used to spend over ten thousand dollars a month word of honor on marketing paper click and all kinds of things like that I spend nothing now once in a while I'll run a Facebook boost for 25 35 bucks that's nothing my luck the success in America in running these real estate businesses is to keep your overhead low and your profits high. And social media marketing does that. So you've got to be consistent in the placement of your content. It's got to be contemporary. If there's something in the news today about real estate is doing fantastic in California, Texas, Missouri, Colorado, interest rates are going up or down. There's a shortage of inventory. Talk five minutes, you know, put You've got to put contemporary things in there because people want, they don't want to read or watch a video from 1997. They want to see right now, today, uh, what's, what's in the news, what's important to them, what's relating. And when you put in your title something that's in the news today that relates in the real estate business, you get unbelievable thousands, hundreds and thousands of followers who subscribe to your video or to your Facebook page or Twitter or whatever you use. So it's got to no, be... I just went to uh, uh, news.google.com, did a search for real estate investing, and here's an article from Forbes just from a week ago about real estate investing. And uh, it's called, after I click through all of their ads, timely tips for the new real estate investor, right? Well, what if you just, and, and, and the cool thing about what you're talking about, Claude, and I totally agree with everything you're saying, uh, th these don't have to be 20, 30 minute long videos with a bunch of pre- yeah, uh, figured out content. It could just be use on a live uh, uh, from your phone saying, hey guys, I just read this great article on Forbes uh, on the uh, five tips for being uh, in, getting involved in real estate investing. Yeah. And tip number one is treat your real estate investments like a business. Number two is know your strengths, know your weaknesses. And number three, blah, blah, blah. And you could say, listen guys, if, you, if you're looking for good deals in the St. Louis market right now, uh, contact me. Here's my phone number. Send me a message and uh, let's talk. That, and yeah. that could be as simple as that, right? Yeah. Our folks call me. You want to sell your home in the next 30 days? You want to get the top sales price? Would you like to save a real estate commission or use a real estate or use the best? Re if I work with a lot of realtors, the best realtors in the industry, I'm talking about people making high five and six figures per month, are using social media. They're standing in front of the houses. They're doing tours with drones, <clears throat> giving information about inventory, mortgages, interest rate. Great, consistent, contemporary information to people. Uh, it has to be compelling. There's two more C's, compelling. It's got to draw them in because it's got to have a great title, a great picture. You can insert in a lot of the marketing and YouTube, you can put in your own picture. Okay, so, so Instagram is the hottest thing right now because it's all pictures. In YouTube, you can insert a picture that will be marketed on Google. So when they do the search, they'll see a cartoon or they'll see a mind map or they'll see something that also the picture 
it tell, it's 10,000 words, it'll draw them in um, that way. So you make it here's compelling. A, here's Go another ahead. good art, example, Claude. It's just, again, going to news.google, did a search for sell house. Here's an article from Orlando, the Orlando Sentinel. And it's yeah. about ready, set, show, how to stage and sell a house. What you could do is like, you could go, listen, I just read this depressing article, guys, in the Orlando Sentinel. It says, these are the 20 steps that you need to do to stage your house. Like, can you believe that? Look how overwhelming this is. You got to view curb appeal. You got to thin everything out. You got to cover everything up. You got to detail everything. You got to get under the surface. You've got to remove your pet stuff. You got to keep your house clean. You got to project a lifestyle. Who wants to do all of that? You could talk about, listen, if you want to sell your house fast and not worry about staging your home, then just call me and we can talk. I can get you out of there. I'll even take the stuff out of the house for you. You don't even have to worry about it. Just take your personal stuff. And what are you getting when you put out this great quality information? Uh, and the last C, by the way, is keep it non-commercial. Don't say me, 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 give me your money, 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 buy, 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 banners, pop-ups and everything. You don't gain credibility. You just get them to click or delete you, or now go away. But when you give this kind of contemporary, interesting, compelling, entertaining information, you gain credibility, you gain respect, you become familiar with that person. People do business with people they like and trust, duh. Okay, so if we give out this great information to people in video, in pictures, in articles, in blogs, in, in live streaming, it doesn't cost us anything except time and creativity, and we gain respect, we virtually attract people, we get all the leads we will ever need for buyers, sellers, investors, Joe. All right, so uh, you start doing this, it, you know, does, does it, how quickly does it happen? Does it happen overnight? No. It, how long does it take? How long do you need to be consistent with it? I'm going to use the, the word I hate the most. This is the word. It's a clean word. This word I hate the worst. Patience. All okay. Right. You've got to have, and I hate, I'm, I think impatience is a virtue in business. Okay. But you've got to be a little patient in this. You've got to put out quality uh, content. You've got to pick the social media of your choice, by the way. I don't want, I mentioned all these different social medias, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and all this. Pick just one and become efficient with it. And while you're becoming efficient with it, put out this information and, and on a consistent level, okay? You've got to do it. Uh, I would say in the real estate business, the more content you put out, the more often you do, you're going to get a following. So if you could, I would suggest you do, at, at the least once a month. And that's really not enough. I'll take that back. I'd like to see once a week. And if you're really serious, everybody says, Claude, I'll do whatever it takes to become successful. Then do it every day like I do it. Talk to five people a day like Joe tells you to do. Put out social media content every day like I tell you to do. And you will see the magic happen in your business. You will have the best, you will have what I call quality leads. Not, right, so, not garbage leads, quality leads, because they're calling you. I like that a lot. That's good. So let's talk about a little practicality there then. So you're doing the content. Uh, you're doing a video. You put it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, what where, happens where else do you put it? Do you put it on a blog? Do you put it, uh, do you broad, put it on your Facebook? Or what do well, you do here's there? the beauty. Just in YouTube alone. If you put a video on YouTube, by the way, my average video, we skipped over that. My average video, Joe, is usually two and a half to three minutes. Right. Okay. I want to make it fast. I, I talk a little slow, as you can tell. Um, but I want to make it fast. I want to put great content and energy into it. I want to make it compelling. And I do it two and a half minutes. After I do the video, and I can uh, after and I record it in. Um, I usually record it in photo booth, or I can do it live. YouTube now on their iOS devices, you can record live and then instantly upload it to YouTube. So how about that? You're live, so you're getting your stream or following audience, and then you hit the button it uploads. Then underneath it's uh, the video inside YouTube. There's all the little buttons for uh, Twitter, Facebook. Instagram, Pinterest, Blogger, LinkedIn, Reddit, you all the major social media it takes 20, 30 seconds to click the little buttons on all your other social media. Here's the thing. 
you can, you can build up slowly to hundreds and then thousands of followers. Gee, what's Joe going to say next? What's Crazy Claude going to do next? What's his next video? They get notified when they subscribe. You tell them to hit the subscribe button or you give them their phone number. You lead them to their web page or you give them a call to action, something for free, guys. Joe, we should be doing, this should be a seminar. We should be charging $1,000 for it. Is it. Are we really giving this away for free today? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so um, <laughs> now, do you take these videos? Do you put them on a blog? Is that important? Or do, they, do you try to like, I know you can share sometimes, like you can put it on YouTube, but then you can share it on Facebook. But sometimes, uh, you know, Facebook doesn't like it when, because YouTube and Facebook are kind of like competitors, right? I've had times when I see a video on YouTube and I share it on my Facebook and nobody likes it at all. Um, but if I were to take that video and upload it to Facebook, right? You're talking then, organic. You're talking organic versus uh, sharing. Yeah. So it's like okay. uh, Facebook would rather you upload that video you just recorded to Facebook and people watch it there instead of you know sending facebook doesn't want to send people to youtube you know what i'm saying yeah yeah macy's so. doesn't play with gimbals or whatever you know what the thing about it is though when i do a youtube video i click my facebook i can do an organic one in facebook i can do a facebook live and save it in there the thing is what's the where do i get the most bang for my buck it the whole thing is free no matter what which you what i suggest is that you pick i love youtube and Facebook. Those are my two main, those are my two main social engines. Okay. Pick one that you're really good at. LinkedIn right now. There are people who are capitalizing, monetizing right through LinkedIn. I was watching a guy, uh, I was watching the storm that just occurred. Okay. There's a weatherman. Let me tell you about this story real quick. There's a weatherman called Jeff uh, Piotrowski. He was in Houston for the one hurricane. Okay, he was the only person with all the NBC and CNN and the Weather Channel, he was on St. Padre's Island broadcasting live the hurricane as it was coming in. That's the outermost island. He had 22,000 people watching him live on Periscope, which is a live streaming video. Those people are all subscribing to him and are loyal followers. He then went to Florida and he got those same 22,000 people to follow him in Florida. Okay, I saw during the hurricane, I was watching the hurricane, just to keep this contemporary, there was a 15 year old kid who was on Marathon Island in the Keys while these 160 mile an hour were going. This kid was the only person in the world broadcasting from, from, from the islands, the Keys, okay? He had 12,000, I got my notes here, he had 12,000 people watching this 16 year old kid. Come on. And then he went off the air and no one knew if he was alive or not. And his sister went on yesterday from Orlando, Florida, and she said he's okay. She got 4,000 people watching her while she was doing it live. You got a guy like Jake Paul, who's from the Disney Channel, and now he's doing live broadcasting on YouTube and all these others. He's got 20 million subscribers and followers. What, what's my point? How can we get this? I've got thousands of people who follow me because of my gut sales just on YouTube. How much would it cost me to buy uh, 10,000 loyal followers who watch my videos on every YouTube I do? How much would that cost me, Joe? Quite a bit. Quite a bit. It doesn't cost me anything except time and creativity. Give people great value yeah. on a consistent basis. You will get all the leads you will ever need for your real estate business. You know, I'm just looking here right now at, uh, I did, went to iTunes, looked for podcasts. I did a search for St. Louis real estate and uh, there's a bunch of podcasts here and none of them uh, are, have been updated in the last year. Yeah. <laughs> um, except this one that just kind of started a few months ago, but even she is not very consistent. Uh, I so would there's tell anybody to go into Google right now or after they watch this broadcast and type in for their area, Colorado, St. Louis, Missouri, Florida, and type in lease purchase, uh, St. Louis, or, and then hit video in Google because people love video. And, what, and look for the timestamps on that. And if you are the person in your Columbus, Ohio area who is doing a weekly or monthly vi video on lease purchasing for buyers or sellers, guess which one people are going to click on? They're going to yeah. click, click on the one that's the latest one, right, Joe? Oh, yeah. Nobody wants to see the one from two, three years ago. It's just human nature. 
Well, yeah, and, and it, it, right now, um, I, sometimes it depends on whether YouTube shows videos or not. But usually when you do a search for something, the videos will show up in the search results. Exactly. Guess who owns YouTube, by the way? Google. Google. You're working, you're working within the top, number one um, web page in the world is Google. Number two is YouTube, sometimes Facebook. If you're using all three, you cannot, and you're putting out content on a regular basis, you will draw, you will virtually attract great leads. I get every day, Joe, I get people email me from my videos and from my postings and live streams. I get, um, I get texts. I get people go to my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com, and they schedule with me for a free consultation. I get people who call me because I put out my phone number all the time. I make myself, I virtually attract people rather than chase them with mailers and with other knocking on doors and all the other stuff that's time consuming and costly. I get a great ROI by putting out content in the one device that everybody has in their hand 24-7. Yeah, so you have I'm, what 12 13 children now, right? Don't they all have iPhones 15 15? Yeah <laughs> That's our running joke ladies and gentlemen <laughs> I was just looking at st. Louis lease purchase and then you know that I think it's important too to niche if you can right um, you should niche to a specific strategy or topic or Try to be as narrow as possible. Don't try to be really really broad um, if you're doing wholesaling, you're doing turnkey real estate, if you're selling properties to cash flow investors, then focus your videos and your social media content on that thing, you know, selling, you could, you could do videos on like top Anything. five tips on how to manage property from, uh, from another city, right? Yeah. Listen, I work with realtors in uh, all over, I, uh, especially California, where I live in San Diego, and I work with real estate agents and brokers, and I tell them, don't just do real estate and statistics and stuff. Talk about the, your favorite restaurant in your San Francisco neighborhood. Talk about the, your favorite place to go jogging or play tennis or bike riding. Give people information in a broader sense and draw them in. To, oh, by the way, I'm also a, a lease purchase specialist. I'm a local. I'm a local realtor. I'd love to help you buy or sell your next dream home. I, if you feel good about the information, I give me a call. I'd love to consult with you for free and help you. You see, you could do it. You don't have to do these blatant, obvious commercials. You give content first. You gain credibility and respect and familiarity, and then you go and then you segue because people feel. People call me up all the time. I'm sure you get it too, Joe. And they say, Joe, I listen to your podcast. I feel like I know you. I feel comfortable about you. I trust you. Isn't that what we shoot for in marketing? Yeah, that's really important. And that's really, really good. Okay. If we just do commercial, commercial, give me, give me, give me, we're not going to gain, we're not going to gain anything. We just sound like a used car sales guy. So what would be an example, Claude, of somebody who wants to, uh, they're, they're doing lease purchasing, all right? and they want to start attracting sellers that be willing to do a lease purchase. What would be a good example of a, of a video that you could do or a blog post or something about that? Hi, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Claude Diamond. I'm a lease purchase consultant. I'm the author of Lease Purchasing for the 21st Century. How would you like to sell your home in the next 30 days or less for the top sales price? I have a free mind map here that I'd be glad to send you, or if you click on the button below, a free consultation, and I'll show you through lease, but the lease purchase solution, how to sell your home, get the top sales price, save yourself a real estate commission, get wonderful tenants who pay on time and take care of all the maintenance on your property with lease purchasing. Please call me. I answer my own phone, 970-281-5151. No one deserves success more than you. That's it. And you know, people I think might be a little intimidated by that thinking, well, how am I going to come up with stuff to say? It's not that hard. It's not as hard as you might think. I mean, if you're looking for ideas, there's this thing called YouTube, right? And you yeah. could watch, you could Google lease purchase. You could go to YouTube and find a bunch of videos on lease purchasing, come up with ideas and tips. Or uh, you can go to news.google, do a search for that. Go to Bigger Pockets, go to Facebook groups, do a search for uh, articles about this stuff and get ideas on this. You could even, this is a fantastic idea if you're looking for ideas for content. Go to Amazon, look for books on Amazon about real estate investing, about lease purchasing, right? Look at the table of contents because a lot of times on those books you can see the inside 
and look at the table of contents and see. Uh, I'm not telling you that I copy what they're writing about, but look to see what the chapters are. And that could come up, that could help you come up with really good ideas. And what was the uh, Popeye? Popeye, exactly. Popeye is my hero because Popeye said the greatest philosophical phrase ever. He said, I am what I am. That's all what I am. You don't have to be Claude Diamond. You don't have to be Joe McCall. You don't have to walk on coals with Anthony Robbins. You just have to be yourself and talk about, listen, I like to talk about my screw ups, the mistakes I've made in this business. People find that interesting. Talk about your successes. Talk about a book you just, uh, uh, books you just read recently. Talk about interesting people you meet or questions. And I like to talk about stalls and objections that I mm -hmm. receive. Anything that you, every day I get new content from life, Joe, from the people I talk to, from the things I read, I write them down, I write them all down and I have a list of videos. I always have a list of videos or articles or pictures or things that I can put in social media. And this, it's changed the way my business worked. It lowered my overhead. It gave me quality calls, not garbage calls. Okay, much better quality. My ROI is so high because I'm not spending any money. I'm spending time uh, being creative. And, you know, just a little tip here. Uh, if, if, if it is a challenge for you to be this creative, there are uh, applications out there like Sniply, S-N-I-P dot L-Y, where you can use other people's content, even yeah. stuff from Joe or myself, and you can utilize that to attract people to your web page. And, and so be, we got to stop being a secret is the bottom line. And whether we use the post office or whether we use social media, we got to wake up every morning and say, I am not a secret. I got to let people know that I can help them solve their problems. Yeah, I like that a lot. So I'm still not convinced we need to do away with direct mail. But I am convinced, like, for example, um, I have a I've kerosene a lantern in the garage somewhere. I, I mean, if you say I, maybe it'll cut down on your electric bill. If you like it, I can ship it to you. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Like, if, if there's somebody that's going through an eviction right now, you can pull up their county records. You can go to the court records, and you can pull up who's going through an eviction right now, and you can send them, you can send those landlords a letter. Hey, you're having problems with that tenant? I'll buy your house. Give me a call. I, that's might be a little too hard to do with social media, but let me say this though. I know a guy that was doing a lot of short sales way back in the, uh, well, he's still doing a lot of, them. Uh, but one of the things he was doing, he was getting the notice of defaults and the 30, 60, 90 day lates. And he was going to Facebook and finding those people on Facebook and sending them private messages. So if he found a Joe Smith in this part, certain area of St. Louis was going through foreclosure, he would send a message to all of the Joe Smiths that he could find in Facebook saying, uh, hey, do you want to sell your house? I'd love to buy it. And uh, a lot of them weren't, uh, that wasn't their house, so they would ignore him. But he was, he was finding these people through social media. So that may be something that uh, people could do and take away from this. I think people have to gravitate towards what is the most practical for them, what their budget will allow. Okay, which gives them the results. I want to be busy as hell every I want to speak to five new prospects every day. I know you say the exact same thing. And if I can, I, that's all I want to do. The end result is if I speak to five new people a day with the gut sales method where I ask questions, where we have a friendly adult to adult conversation, if I can attract that me, enough leads every day so I can speak to those people, my business will financially succeed wonderfully. I don't get in my car. I don't drive all over the place. I work on my desk in front of my laptop, my iPhone, my iPad. I do my marketing and I talk to people all day long. And if I speak to an, it's this simple, Joe. If we have a marketing plan that works, regardless of who's right or whatever, whichever one we prefer or both. Okay. And I think there's room for both, frankly. The thing is, if we get busy enough, we will succeed. And that, yeah, the consistency is key. No matter what type of marketing you're doing, you've got to be consistent with it. Consistently putting out simple content doesn't have to be 10, 20 minutes. It can be a couple, three minutes long. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's so easy to go online and get some inspiration and just read some articles online and, and, and help you jog your, 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 your memory for things you can talk about. Yeah. And if you're just, you know, and like we didn't even talk much about live streaming. 
Okay, use, I, I, I know you use it too. So we use Periscope, okay? I'm on Periscope, Beer with Claude Fridays. I watch other people on Periscope. There's some wonderful real estate content uh, from some real celebrities on Periscope. I watch Facebook Live. You use it all the time now, okay? Your Facebook followers not only are reading and watching your pictures, but they're also following you when you're live, uh, broadcasting live. There's YouTube Live, right now yeah. too. Mm -hmm. So so we have we can our little phone has allowed us to become NBC nothing but Claude. Uh, okay, we can we can broadcast we can do things like I was telling you the weatherman and uh, and the people who have uh, content can broadcast live have thousands of people go to their web page. If you go on YouTube, there are young people on YouTube who are broadcasting almost every night and then saving their videos on YouTube. And they have thousands and thousands of followers. Some have millions of subscribers. And if you can monetize those into your real estate business, you can't help but succeed. I, I agree. Very, very good. You know, I see a lot of realtors have tried to do this and have not succeeded. Because they're had, boring, because garbage is garbage and commercial is commercial. Their content is boring. It has to be interesting, Joe. Yeah, it can't good. be just, hi, I'm the best realtor. I'm reaching out to you today. They're sick of that stuff. Nobody wants a robot call. Nobody wants another commercial. We're in a world of Netflix where I pick the movie and I can go to the, I can stop the movie and go to the bathroom and make a bologna sandwich, not in that order. Um, but I can do what I want with my time. And you've got to respect people's time. And, and if you put out great content, you could be the best realtor in your community because people are, what does everybody do when they need a real, when somebody needs a realtor or has a problem in real estate, so many people go to Google and are they going, and you got to ask yourself, do I have enough content out there on a regular basis so that they're going to find me? That's all you have to do is reverse engineer the process. What is everybody, I study people, Joe, and you do too. When you go to the airport today, or you go on an airplane, or you, or you go, go past the school, what is every kid holding in their hand doing right now? Oh, they're holding the phone. They're holding a phone. They're sending Snapchats. They're sending pictures and selfies. They're broadcasting. They're playing games. They're researching. What is the one electronic device that has changed, culturally changed America, changed the world over literally since 19 whatever, when it, uh, it's 10 year anniversary of the iPhone, uh, I believe today, okay? In 10 years, we have seen a cultural shift uh, with these electronic uh, devices. Everybody take, has an iPhone in their hand. If you leave the house and you, forget, and you go in your car and you forget your iPhone, what do you say? Oh, God, I got to go back home, right? Gotta stop, turn around. Got to go stop, <laughs> turn around, right? Yeah. We, we cannot ignore this marketing, this wonderful gateway marketing digital device that gives us entry to the universe. We cannot ignore it. So why would we want to? So the post office is lovely, okay? I, you know, the Pony Express and all that was wonderful history. I homeschool my kids too. But the thing is, let's market to the one thing that everybody has in their hand 24-7. I think a really good important point to think about too is that um, the earlier you start doing this, the better. Because the longer your content is out there, the more seasoned it gets, the more that Google and Facebook and YouTube and all of them like it and promote it. So it's, it's the longer you do it, the sooner you start, the more fruit and, and uh, benefit you're going to see in the future. Oh, yeah. Uh, and one of the things I do with my students is I even help them make videos. I'll say, interview me or I'll interview you or let's do some role plays or let's talk about your favorite restaurant in your community or tell me about your favorite deal. And we'll make a little short two minute video, put a great title in, put the right keywords in, put a descriptive thing in the box, insert a great picture. Um, so that they see it when there's Googling and they will start getting attention if they have a call to action. Really good. Yeah. This has been a really, really good podcast, Claude. About time, right? That's about time. <laughs> uh, so I, I think people need to take social media more seriously uh, because it's, it, it can help your business. It, it can't do anything but help your business. You know, unless you're boring and you just, 
you, you drone on and on and on for 30 <laughs> minutes. So that's then don't do social media. Yeah. And I'm going to write you a letter and put it in the post office today. Thanking you for this podcast, by the way, Joe, I'll, I'll read it. Cause I still read my mail. See this gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I got a little old school left in me. <laughs> hey, you know what? The, there's a guy I just, uh, who interviewed me. Uh, oh, I forget his name right now off the top of my head. Super nice guy. He has a podcast, a real estate podcast called The Old Dogs of Real Estate. Claude, The Old Dogs of Real Estate. And I said, well, am I old? I mean, how, why are you inviting me on the show? And he said, well, normally you have to be over 50. And I said, well, you know, I'm 43 or something. He said, yeah, you're well, the young guy. That's old enough. He said, you're, you're old enough to be on the Old Dogs podcast. So um, th that's a good guy you should reach out to, by the way. Um, he's out of Oh, I can't believe I forgot his name. The Old Dogs of Real Estate. Uh, you'd be perfect for that show, Claude. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, thank, thanks a lot, Joe. <laughs> At least you have. <laughs> 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 Let's talk about hair for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? There's seriously another podcast another time. There are some still viable old school techniques that work very, good, uh, very well. That's still, you know, hanging up a, the sign, if it's uh, hanging up signs in the right neighborhood, you cannot believe the response you get on a good sign in the right neighborhood yeah. um, with a big phone number, cell number on it. Yeah, the response can be magnificent. Especially when you're selling a home. Especially, that's, yeah. That's one of my best ways to find, favorite ways to find tenant buyers. Oh, oh, yeah. And I use the phone. I want phone calls. I want to talk to people. I don't believe you can always automate everything in real estate. I think there still has to be that person to person uh, yeah. communication where they feel, I think I can blow away the competition. Um, and I tell this to my students, you don't have to be the biggest at the fanciest office, the nicest car, but you do have to find a way to communicate and gain trust and respect and likability. And you do that through one, uh, I use the phone, but I, what I really love, as you know, is, is getting on uh, FaceTime or Zoom or Skype and getting that one-on-one uh, -on -one video conference with people. That really crushes it. Yeah, that's really good. All right, Claude, uh, yeah. how can people get a hold of you? What's your phone number again? Um, phone number is 970-281-5151, or just, just Google Claude Diamond. You'll find me, guys. I've got my free stuff on my webpage. I've got 650-something videos on YouTube, and I do answer my own phone. And um, thank you, Joe. Uh, I love your podcasts. I listen to them. I love the information and the way you form. You have such a wonderful style and format, uh, unlike a lot of the other people out there who are so commercial. I, I love that. I love the people who give in this business, and you're one of the givers. Thank well, you. Thank you, Claude. I appreciate it. I've learned from the best. Claude, guys, if you don't know, is one of my coaches and mentors, and uh, Claude's a good friend as well. He's been in the business a long time, and you know, when you're in the business that long, you know what works you see the fads come and go uh you see people that struggle you see people that do really well and there's a common theme throughout this everything that we're talking about here it's sales it's knowing how to talk to people. million dollar skill it's a million dollar skill and if you want to get good if you want to get better at sales give claude a call uh, he's got a great uh, training system called the guts sales system yeah and uh, i i send people to him all the time who needs some help with sales training. So I recommend you give Claude a shout and talk to him. Cool? Cool. All right, Claude. Thank you so much, guys. If you want the show notes and all the stuff that we talked about in this podcast, go to realestateinvestingmastery.com and check out the other interviews we did with Claude. Uh, we had a really popular podcast called Making the Cold Call Warm. Oh, yeah. That was a really good call. So yeah. if you go to realestateinvestingmastery.com, do a search for the word Claude or Diamond in the search bar on the website. You'll see all the other episodes I've done with Claude in the past. Cool. Hey, thanks a lot, Claude. Thank you, Joe. That's a wrap. <laughs>